I was doing a bit of experimenting uh, today, uh, playing around with uh, API choices and stuff like that. And uh, let me show this off, and then I'll get into what this actually is and what the motivations were. What did I forget? Oh. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's get a trace running. So, the IP for destination. And I'm sending it to, okay, I'm sending it to my gateway. So let's apply that and there will be Oh, cuz I forgot something important. There we go. HTTP payload, you can see that it is HTML. Um, we can go a little bit further. Let's uh, smack this in a div. another payload and you see it's now within a div and uh, let's just do some really simple test uh, that's going to fail so I guess just if false does this compile on Ida? I, I don't remember if that will actually work in Ida well, it compiles does it do what I want though? Hey, it does. This is um, rather exciting to me. Now, very important thing I want to get out of the way. This is overwhelmingly prototype stuff. I have no idea if I'm going to finish this. I have no idea if I want to, or even if this approach will work when scaled way out. Um, but the thing I was thinking is that it would be pretty easy to create a domain-specific language for this, where um, it translates a few things over uh, from the DSL into this code. Uh, so if we were to translate that, uh, let's indent, indent a few things first. Uh, whoop, other way. Uh, yeah, th this will work for now. This will work. It'll get the point across. So if we were to modify this into a rough sketch of uh, DSL, Uh, probably wouldn't even need that net, to be honest. 
I think you can see how this could be pretty easily translated into what we just had. Now, the idea of using uh, pre-compiled web pages is not actually that unusual. I know a lot of people know web development stuff from like PHP and uh, what would be another big one? Ruby on Rails. Uh, I think it's Django for Python. I'm not super big on web development. Uh, but uh, pre-compiled web pages are actually a thing uh, with um, like ASP and ASP.NET make quite a bit of use of them. Uh, they existed pretty well before that too. Like uh, what's the thing called? Um, CGI and fast CGI uh, were essentially using that uh, well before any kind of language specific web server came about. Uh, you will also notice, though, that the uh, the sockets that I had defined there, which was ba basically just uh, um, this, I don't know if you've ever used uh, NatSock. There's a lot more writing than just this. Uh, in fact, I think I still have the thing I was doing with NatSock. Yes, I do. This is opening up that same socket in NatSock and then writing uh, just, a, just a string. I was kind of bitching on Twitter earlier, so <laughs> that's what this was from. Uh, from. Um, but I... I'll show what's in these, but the there's not a whole lot right now. Um, but the sockets is essentially a wrapper around this, so that this entire thing could be condensed down to this part and this part, which is a lot less writing, a lot easier to make use of. This is a lot. And mind you, this part is obsolescent nowadays anyways, so you can uh, you can generally remove this, but the rest of it still needs to be written, and that's, that's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. So delving into what I was dinking around with, uh, the sockets... Uh, package is literally just a wrapper around NAT sockets right now. Uh, it takes advantage of the controlled types to do some special stuff in the initialization and finalization. Uh, where is it? Yeah, so at initialization it actually creates the socket and assigns the channel and at finalization it closes the socket and uh, nulls out the channel. Other than that, basically everything's just wrappers along with uh, some interface to the actual stream because it's the the socket the socket type is uh, wrapping up the stream as well. And the way this works is a little wordy. Uh, there's a heck of a lot going on here. Uh, it look well. It it looks a lot more overwhelming than it really is. Uh, the only thing that you'd actually be making use of is like the put for the content tag, which of course isn't a real thing, but I needed to have it called something. But then just like the the div and end div and paragraph and end paragraph and it, the same for any of the other ones. Um. What these actually do behind the scenes is tack on to this list. Now I'm using the the uh, doubly linked list and the add as containers. Uh, I'd probably write out my own because there's actually a um, validation thing that should be doing uh, in what would be called a uh, 
I believe it's a loopback link list or something. Uh, lists can get really complicated, but it's essentially a list with loops uh, between specific nodes. Uh, and you'd use that to validate that all the tags are actually ended appropriately rather than sending it off to the browser to, for them to find that out. Because you don't, you don't want the person browsing your website to, to find that out the hard way. But uh, This is just a proof of concept right now. So, Yeah, this uh, pretty pretty delightful compared to what uh, like AWS does. Actually, let's... I'm uh, um, doing mod stuff, too. Uh, AWS... Yeah. What is it? Demos? Uh, geez, they got a lot of demos. Um, I think we can go into... Yeah, they got templates and split. So let's do. Yeah, how fun reading that. So still, like I said, I don't know if I want to go the whole route with this. I, I don't know if I'm actually going to make this a thing or not. It was just something I was playing around with, but I did want to show it off. 